They refer to, to, to things in the physical world. 
So we have to make a connection between these labels and physical properties. So the particle labels, as far as I can see, serve as, as kind of coordinates. And they do not contain <coughs> information in them in themselves. So you have to say what they refer to in physical properties. They relate to the, the, the correspond. Now that we pay attention to particles of the same kind, so the state independent properties are the same, particles with the same mass, charge, things like that. So, because these, uh, we, we, there are no differences in the, in the uh, state independent uh, properties, we cannot make labels correspond to state independent uh, properties in order to distinguish uh, particles. So we have to uh, make use of state-dependent properties. In order to make it clear that uh, the labels themselves do not carry any information, what we could do is go over to re the reduced state space. So if we exchange particles, uh, sorry, labels, indices, we can get, this is an example in, in which we have uh, two particles, we would go from this point to that point, what we can now do is uh, well, dividing out this uh, difference by uh, taking the quotient of the phase space with respect to the permutation field. So I have here made the drawing to the case of two particles, but you could do the same thing quite in general. So what you do is uh, identifying phase points that only differ in the permutation of the labels. Still, in such a case, in the representation, at least, if, if, if you make a drawing, some distinction must be made in the axis between the first one and, and the second one. Even if I uh, leave out this, uh, this part here, the representation is the first and second label. But it, well, this is a way of uh, formalizing the point that I was making a moment ago, namely that. Uh, it, it's, it's only the physical properties that count and not the labels uh, themselves. And now Gibbs comes back into the story. There's this uh, famous quotation from his book on uh, statistical mechanics from 1903, in which he says, if two phases differ only in that certain similar particles have changed places with respect to each other, are they to be regarded as identical or different phases? So that's exactly the, the, the question I put before you a moment ago. If the particles are regarded as indistinguishable, it seems in accordance with the spirit of the statistical method to regard the phases as uh, identical. Well, I think that's, that, that's, that's a very weak statement because I think it's not um, a matter of statistics and the statistical method that's uh, important. It's, uh, it's a very fundamental thing. If you think uh, about what they just said, that particles are, dis are individuated by the physical properties, that the exchange of these uh, labels doesn't make any physical difference. So they actually refer to these, these different points, these different phases, to exactly the same physical situation. So I would say this is not a matter of statistics, but rather of fundamental physics, or even metaphysics, if you think about what a particle actually uh, is. It's exactly the same physical uh, situation. Unless, so, so there is some room for disagreement uh, here, unless you think that the labels do carry information by themselves. And that's a position that's well known from the well, from the history of philosophy. If you think that the labels refer to what they call ex this kind of primitive business, business, it's uh, not comes back to the not sound you will be familiar with this with to a, a scholastic philosophy, to the scholars and so on. Discussions about universals and uh, and, and particulars. But I take the position, and I hope that uh, you agree with me, that in, in physics that's a very reasonable position, that we shouldn't think of, uh, of labels in this way. So I'm, I'm thinking of labels in a physical way, connected with physical properties. Now, if you go to this reduced phase description, so that, actually that was, you could say that's, that was something we commented by Gibbs in the context of the problems in statistical mechanics and to be of mixing and things like that. Because I would perhaps we'll come back to that in the end if there is uh, sufficient time. But if we go over to this reduced uh, space, uh, space, 
and still, at least in the presentation, there seems to be a, not a difference between the, the, the two particles. It's, it's not really there, but in the presentation you see an X1 and an X2, so there's still a difference. You can, you can get rid of that by having recourse to yet another presentation. <coughs> One that was uh, proposed by EMFES in, in the first half of the 20th century by means of the EMFES. So, what EMFES said is that one and the same physical situation, so, so think of a configuration of uh, particles, can be represented by all these phase points that follow from each other by permutation of levels together. And what you then get, well, it's not a very interesting figure, but I see it. So, that's the pair of points that I see, but if, if you go to more dimensions, it, you have more particles, you would get a, a nice, it's a thing of all the permutations, you get a kind of star in, in phase uh, space, which is called the ear test star. And now you can set up a formalism for classical mechanics of, uh, of similar particles, particles in which the states are completely symmetrical in the, in the uh, indices, by having this uh, star. And then what you also have to do, of course, completely reasonable given the uh, irrelevance in, in the <coughs> of the labels. What you also have to do is to make all the, the, the properties, the, the observables, you could say, symmetrical in these uh, in, the, in the labels. And so then you can form this in the category in the whole labels uh, uh, occur in a symmetrical way. Now what do we do in, in practice? If you're not going to use this uh, here test uh, star and the use of the uh, we use phase space at all for something that well that, that is something which is used but is not very uh, common but very everyday use of classical mechanics. What we do, of course, is uh, associating labels with with particle properties and we make just a conventional choice. So particle label one pertains to the to the uh, particle here, and particle label two to the particle. Uh, there, which means that we associate, so position is just an example that, that I gave, okay, that it means that we associate the, the labels with states. So the labels refer to, uh, to states of the, of the uh, system. And then it, it, the physical theory determines, uh, well, what exactly we get out of that? So if the states are such that's what we are used to in, in, in classical mechanics. That in classical mechanics we used to the, to the uh, assumption, at least, that particles can never occupy the same position. And what we then get is a, it's a kind of uh, is a, a unique association with the particles that we are part of that we, that, that, that we usually think of the, the common concept of particle and these uh, layers. You could also think of a theory, it's, it's not personal mechanics, in which it is possible to have the same state, well, let's say doubly excited. In that case, it would be, if you follow the same uh, line of argument, it would be reasonable to say that only one label refers to that doubly excited state, so it's, it's one object, and you shouldn't say that there are two particles <laughs> associated with that state, because if you do that, then you, you're assigning mm -hmm. an informational content to the concept of, uh, of the label that transcends the, the, the states. So, to, 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 to uh, give kind of a little bit of motivation for this whole story, <coughs> this of course already resembles certain aspects of, uh, of quantum mechanics, uh, and many particle theory, quantum mechanics, and, and perhaps a transition to field theory and Fox space and things like that. You can do very similar things in, uh, in classical mechanics. So, so I think it, it, it's, it's a matter of the mechanics that it, it, in fact particles can never uh, occupy the same position. This is, this is always assumed, but, but never made explicit, I think, in the Hamiltonians. So even three particles are actually never to be able to occupy the same, uh, same set. So, what was the upshot of this uh, rather long introduction? That the labels carry physical information from not out of themselves, 
but by representing the physical uh, states. And in the absence of characteristics that distinguish these uh, states, and, and I leave it open what aspects these are, that this may be relational as aspects, the concept of different individual systems would lose its applicability. Now let's go to quantum mechanics. Now as soon as we're dealing with uh, systems of the same kind, products of the same kind, you know we have, that we have to uh, make the wave function symmetrical or anti-symmetrical. So these are the famous uh, symmetry or anti-symmetrization, symmetrization or anti-symmetrization postulates. And here I have an example of uh, such a state resulting state, so it's a state of psi, and it's uh, symmetrical between gene and the and the earth. And the, uh, the consequence of this is that the, well, the labels 1 and 2, so to speak, share equal parts of genus and the others. So if you think of these labels, we would like to assign states to them. Suppose you ask yourself, in what state is label 1? It's, it's a state expressing Let, Let's suppose we want to associate the state to the label. Then the only thing you could uh, get is that uh, well the, these these states must be divided between the genus and the gene state and the uh, state. So they would be mixed uh, state. <coughs> if you compare this equation with the equation that I sketched a moment ago, the, 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 the classical uh, situation, how do the two situations that you have. Well, what you very often hear, and also can read in textbooks, is, uh, well, first, the quantum mechanics part labels occur symmetrically, that's a direct consequence of these uh, symmetrization uh, postulates, but then it goes on and people say, that means that identical quantum part particles are all in the same state, if you apply the partial case uh, uh, <laughs> method, the procedure to the state, which I more or less did, in the example of the previous uh, slide, defining the keys and the atoms uh, between two uh, labels. What you get is that all the labels are, like, are in exactly the same state, and what people may say is that the, the, the quantum particles are all in the same state. And that this is something new and unexpected in, uh, in quantum mechanics, something that's without classical uh, counterpart. And in some textbooks, it, this is a bit more controversial. It's also said that this strange feature of quantum mechanics is able to cast light on conceptual problems even in classical mechanics. Things have to do with the calculation of entropies. And, uh, I already mentioned these this entropy of mixing and the Gibbs paradox in connection with this, uh, with this quotation of Gibbs. Uh, but I, I think this and this, these two statements are fundamentally wrong and mistaken and confused, although they occur well, very frequently in the, uh, in the literature. What's the reason for that? Uh, completely symmetrical states, if it's the, 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 uh, the labels are equally divided between the, the, the physical states, well, can be written down in classical mechanics as well. And as I pointed out, this really indicated the, the fact that the labels by themselves have no content. They, they, they are kind of cage variables. They are kind of arbitrary coordinates. So you can arbitrarily choose in, in the classic case that's better to assign one or two. But you can also assign both of them. That was the Bernfest uh, star uh, procedure, that, that, that ID. So, so what exactly? is the difference between classical and quantum mechanics. Now, it is, and this question becomes even more urgent if you consider the following uh, thing. Uh, also, in quantum mechanics, it's possible to do something similar as what I did the maneuver I made in classical mechanics, namely to go over from this symmetrical description, in which I have, for instance, this interest uh, star, to a description in which I associate labels to physical states. And this is especially clear 
it's not by convention, so that the, the level is uniquely interpreted for the experiment. And this is especially clear in the case of the fermions. So you know fermions, that, that's, that's a kind of particle. So it's an NP, n pi semi 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 And so what you get for the description of a many fermion system is uh, anti symmetrical uh, states. And now you can do without all the other states, so you can reduce the, the total Hilbert space in such a way that you only have these anti symmetrical states. And that's my mathematical procedure that's uh, called the, the, taking the batch product of individual states. So instead of taking the full tensor product of one particle of states, I'm now go looking at kind of anti the anti symmetrical part of that, and that's a well known mathematical quantity called the batch product. Now, I didn't have on my computer the, the, the symbol that indicates the batch, which is just this. So I took this, uh, this, uh, this triangle here. But, uh, so beware that if you compare this with what's in the literature, it's just this. So the same sim symbol that occurs in the outer product, for instance, if you take the factor product. And, and, so, and so what you get then, if you, if you think in terms of this uh, so-called uh, batch product, is that um, what you usually denote in the following way is an anti-symmetrical state, which looks like an entangled uh, state of this, uh, of this uh, form, that transforms into just a product. But it's not more than a product, it's this, uh, it's this uh, batch product. In the same, so, so the formulas that I write down are for two particles, two systems. But you can do exactly the same thing for n particles, and you've got the n fold uh, batch product in that uh, case. And so what you have in that, just, just finishing my sentence. So what you, what you get here is formalism, in which, uh, yes, in, as in the classical case, you have a, a clearly defined series of, of this distinguished, distinguishable, but also different uh, states, and that makes it possible to assign coordinates or, or labels in the same way as we did in the uh, first yeah, Sorry. So you said it looks like an entangled state. Right? Yes. And did you do that purpose? Yes, because I'm so going to argue in a moment that this is not an entangled state. You don't want to think of this as an entangled state? No, no, I don't want to think of this as an entangled state. Actually, the, 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 well, this is something that has been argued in the before. I, I'm coming into that. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like an entangled state. It actually is. So entangled states will, will cause problems in, in, uh, in what I'm going to uh, say for the concept of a particle, I think. But this is not an example. So in, in, in fact, this is very similar to just the, 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 the symmetrical formulation of classical mechanics. And there is no entanglement uh, uh, at all, I would uh, say. So what, what I'm saying is that, that you can write states of this that, that follow in the, in the ordinary formalism just by symmetrizing or anti-symmetrizing correct states. That you can take states, that you can write state, uh, down states of this uh, kind. Well, as, as, as product states, it is that's product. And that makes it possible to confessionally say, well, I associate label one with A and B and, and so on and so forth. So the first people who, uh, who commented on the special character of, 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 of this, uh, so, so following up on the previous, uh, on this, the, the, the special character of, of this uh, state, and who suggested that it should not be considered as an entangled uh, st state in, in, in the problematic sense that you know from politics, uh, mm -hmm. were uh, Kiharini, uh, Maginato, and, and Weber in a very thick uh, article, 2002, and, and some follow up, up articles. There's a paper by uh, uh, Andrea Ludwig and myself. Uh, a couple of years ago, in which we could do something like this in, 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 in order to make the concept of particle clear in quantum terms. And there are recent articles by Ladyman, Lillenborg, and Bikai, and Colton uh, uh, from uh, of a year ago. So, so let me go into some of the, the properties of these uh, batch products. Batch, uh, uh, well, the first and important thing 
is that they do not violate Dunning properties. And that may sound surprising because states of this kind here, yeah. well, think of the secret state that, that looks like uh, that. Well, they seem to be the prototype of states that violate the Dunning properties. But the treatment of, of this case in, in the, is, is really superficial because what people usually forget is that if you're dealing with uh, symmetric, uh, identical particles, that all observables should be uh, symmetrical. And if you take that into account, you will not be able to, to, to derive any value inequalities in states of this, uh, of this uh, kind. So you, you, you need to do something more to get these bell inequalities, and we will see in a moment what you need uh, for that. But, but these states by themselves, in the formalism of identical particles, symmetrical observables, and so on, are completely innocent and, uh, and harmless. Uh, what's possible, and I, I already indicated that a moment uh, ago, is to attribute complete sets of, uh, of, of, of particles, uh, well, states, in one Hilbert space to, to associate that with, with each uh, label. So it's, uh, it's possible here to think of, uh, of an assemb assembly of, of n states, each one representing a particle. Of course, in quantum mechanics, we cannot represent a particle by a, a point in classical phase space. We should to take E parts to, uh, to, to states defined in Hilbert space. But if you make that transformation, if, if, if you make that change, it's possible in, in these uh, Venezuelan states to, uh, well, to, to, to think of n systems, each one uh, uh, completely characterized by a complete state in uh, Hilbert space. And so we can assign labels in exactly the same way as in, in classical uh, physics. Now we can go on a little bit about it to so see the similarities with uh, classical mechanics. If, if you have a free evolution of these uh, wedge uh, states, but the, the, uh, the unit A evolution, then of course these distinguishing properties will remain the same. Actually, so it's easy to, to, to think about these uh, fermions, but if you, uh, if you, if you take anti symmetrical fermion states, you get, they always are in terms of orthogonal states that occur in the wedge perfect. So they are completely distinguishable. distinguishable. So the picture that arises out of this is n particles, in an n particle uh, system, system, this kind of system that you usually discuss in terms of n particles, which are what, what they call in, in, in uh, philosophical, philosophical discussions of the last couple of years, absolutely distinguishable. Because these, uh, these states are orthogonal with respect uh, to each other. So we will not need any notion of uh, big discernibility for those who, who know about uh, that. We will not, we will, we will not need uh, that. So we just get ordinary systems that are absolutely uh, distinct. So that's the same point that we have. And if you make a measurement of, on, on a state of this uh, kind, and I'm not going to say too much, although I think it's very important uh, in, in this circumstance, uh, about the interpretation of quantum mechanics and whether you can speak about properties in themselves without measurement or whether you need measurements and, and, and that only then properties arise in some ways on. But, but let me say in any case that if you have interactions with the system of this kind, measurement interactions that are of the right kind, that do not mix, so, so think of, uh, of position states that are orthogonal with respect to that. So think of this narrow wave packets. If you make uh, a local measurement of these things, the results that will come out of that are of the same kind as what you expect in classical mechanics if you have uh, localized particles at different uh, positions. So the measurements uh, will be in accordance with the idea that there are just these n entities that are distinct from these uh, other. Now, so, so, so what's the, so that's all, all very similar to, to classical mechanics. <coughs> Still, of course, there, there are differences, there are enormous differences. That's not the issue. No. 
there are enormous uh, differences in uh, between classical mechanics and, and uh, quantum mechanics. And, and where do they come from? Well, I would say they do not come from this uh, symmetrization and, 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 and the old labels and that, that, that all these labels are assigned to the same state. No, they come from the different structure of phase space. If you have a vector space uh, structure uh, instead of a classical uh, phase uh, space, this makes it possible to have uh, uh, entanglement superposition, of course, and uh, entanglement. And uh, we will see in a moment that uh, entanglement well, plays an important role. But actually, we haven't seen it yet. That, 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 that was part of my. Uh, my exposition here that the, that the, 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 because the symmetry states will not uh, show that entanglement. So, there are many derivations of the symmetrization rules, which of course look different in quantum mechanics than they do in, in, in classical mechanics, and they all make use in, in one way or another of the, uh, of the, the vector space uh, structure. And, and, and here's a simple derivation. It's, Originally, this new, I think, to compile it, uh, Olympia and, and co workers. And he has written an article recently. I clearly don't think it will come out this year. No? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so I, I could have placed in the future, 2016. Uh, it, 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 it makes use of, of this factor phase structure. So, so the only thing, yet, so in this equation, but there are many derivations. The only thing that you have to assume is that the observables are symmetrical, just as in, uh, in, in classical uh, physics. And then you assume something, well, typically quantum mechanical, in this set, in this re in this equation, that the uh, excitation value is given by the phase uh, operation. And then it very easily uh, follows, because of the symmetry here, that only the symmetrical part of the row, the density operator, uh, contributes to the excitation value. And that uh, can translate in that the pure states must be symmetrical or anti-symmetrical. But there are many more derivations of these uh, of the phase of proceedings of making the symmetrization rules uh, uh, plausible, which in, in which the essential ingredient always is this uh, factor space uh, structure. And then we, uh, so summing up. So there is no difference between classical mechanics and, and quantum mechanics in the fact that the, the labels are physically insignificant, and, and you could say uh, informationally speaking uh, of the others in this uh, symmetrical formalism. And there is also no difference in that in, in many cases, in classical physics actually always, because you assume that part of the trajectory will never cut, will not never intersect. Uh, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, by further of that, in the classic case, you can always associate uh, labels with the physical states. But in quantum mechanics, you can also do that in many cases. Can be the best product uh, states that I just uh, mentioned. And so the difference is, uh, well, in, in the wider, in the, in the, the, the range of possibilities that's allowed by quantum mechanics first, the classical mechanics, and that's because of the, the uh, superposition principle and entanglement. And I would say, and we will see states in which this plays a role in, in a moment, I would say that these states in which this procedure of uh, attaching labels to, to, to uh, subsystems, in which, in which this procedure becomes uh, impossible, as we will see, that this casts the doubt on the, on the concept of a particle at all. Uh, and, uh, so in, 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 in quantum mechanics, it's not a self-evident uh, fact that uh, you, you can speak, that, 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 the, that, the, that the, the concept of a particle is, is a worthwhile concept. So we will uh, come to that in a moment. But anyway, we have seen for the case of these uh, that's products, that uh, it does not follow that distinct and individual particles cannot exist at all in quantum mechanics as a result of these uh, symmetrization rules. So even if the symmetrization rules are there, it's still possible to have situations in which you just have distinct, distinct uh, particles. So, so here we have a couple of uh, examples. So this is a very simple one. If it's, uh, well, you, start, you, you could imagine this state here as a result 
of uh, symmetrizing or anti-symmetrizing here a product state. So this is typically that's product uh, state. Kirai the Maginato Weber state. And it's possible, in, in the way I uh, outlined, to interpret this as a description of uh, just one particle on the left, and L stands for left, and one particle on the, on the right. And this whole state behaves as, uh, as uh, two localized particles would, as long as you, do, as you don't perform non-local uh, measurements. But you, you, you should be aware, so that is a consequence of uh, the, the whole uh, strategy here, that this interpretation makes use of, of the following. We label the, the particles by this L and R, so that's by the states. And that does not correspond to the 1 and 2 in the conventional formalism. So the, the 1 and 2 in the conventional formalism are no particle uh, labels anymore. It's, uh, the, the identification of the particles is done by means of the states. Actually, actually, that's that's the way physicists. Well, you're a physicist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> physicists ordinarily think, I, I would say, about this. Uh, so, so think, you know, well, anticipating a little bit uh, about what I'm going to say. Think of the uh, EPR state. Is it a common way of speaking about the EPR state? You have a particle on the left, and you have a particle on the right. And then you're going to do all kinds uh, of, of, uh, of things. But if you look at formalism, and you, if you have symmetrized the state in, in a way it uh, should be symmetrized, uh, here I have actually. So uh, then you see that you should also symmetrize the, uh, the spatial part, the orbital part of the, of the wave uh, function. So if you think that, that the, 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 the labels uh, indicate particles, you would never be able to say that there's a part on the left and a part on the right, because the labels are equally divided between the left and the right. So, so it's not quite right, so you can say there's no partial on the left and there's no partial on the right, there's no fact about which is which. That's quite an important distinction. I don't see that. <coughs> Why could you say so? so because I'm, I'm so that, that, that would mean that this uh, refers to a state of ignorance about... Uh... No, 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 no I mean, not necessarily ignorance, but there's, there's, there's no fact about which one is where. Um, but you know for sure that there's something here and there's something there. And maybe you're not even going to say that there's um, anything more that could be said than that. Yeah, so, yeah. so they, yeah, this presupposes that uh, the, 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 the says the labels do refer. Well, not, not necessarily, because you can say I can use the labels to set up some mathematics, which I'm going to use to, to write down my states, but then the way I read the states is, is, is as not committing to an identity of a particle which is here and there, and so there are two options. You just say that what this is saying is there's a particle here and there's a particle there, and there's no further fact about um, individuality. Yeah, but if there's a particle here and a particle there, then I could use the, the, the here-ness and the there-ness as labels, put it by. No, no. Um, in, in the same way in the black sphere universe, there's a sphere here and there's a sphere here. Or there's there are spheres, yay distance apart. And my labs are yay distance apart. Okay. Um, but there's there's no unique identifying description that can write in terms of the predicates of the theory. Well, no, that that's so. In, in, yeah. In, well, in the black case. You have to presuppose that you have a kind of relation or universe and, uh, and, and now uh, back, spatial background. But, but here we usually suppose that we do have a spatial well, background. Even if you, I'll show them, even if you have a non-relational space, um, then if it's sufficiently symmetric. Yeah, but you need special assumptions then. So you should, what you ordinarily assume here, <coughs> you, well, the, the, you, you just assume Newtonian space in the background here. And in that case, you could say that's part of the particle uh, there. And, well, let, 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 let's postpone this uh, discussion. So, so, but this, this is an entangled state, actually. So what we have uh, here is uh, a properly synthesized uh, state. But this is not the result of, so I've synthesized the, the, the orbital part as well as the, uh, the spin part. This is not the case 
in, uh, in, in which the state results from symmetrizing or anti-symmetrizing uh, a product state. And uh, now, I would say, in, in the, way, the way people ordinarily uh, discuss this case, if, if you think of, uh, of left and right as, as labels, so because in the derivation of the inequality, we always say that the, 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 the left product and the right the particle, then it's not, no longer possible to associate well, a full set of particle properties to that label. Which means, to my uh, mind, that the, the, the concept of a left particle and a right particle is not applicable at all here, because these two, it, it, it's true that you have a left position and, and a right position, but you cannot associate a set of, of particle properties to those uh, two positions. So, so we really, there is no fully described particle on the left and a fully described particle on the right. Uh, and so, to my mind, this is the background of the, well, the, the non-locality that you find in situations like uh, this. The, the particles, there are just no localized particles. So this is a problematic case. But it's not due to the problematic character here and the violation of balance inequalities with this uh, happens here, of course. But I put it. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so the strange properties here, or strange, or the, the typically quantum properties here, do not result from the symmetrization because you could have symmetrized states even if you involved uh, spin of, of, of this kind, which are just harmless and, and innocent uh, states. So this could be the other percent and the left hand particle with uh, spin up and the right hand particle with spin uh, down. Now, so, so in certain circumstances, it is possible to uh, have quantum descriptions that are very clear to the, to the classical descriptions. But then, of course, we know that uh, well, the Hilbert space is full of uh, superpositions, and uh, in a sense, these are special cases, these uh, pyramids. And so it should be made understandable that in ordinary macroscopic circumstances, we are close to the, to the classical uh, case, or that uh, at least our experimental findings are not in conflict with uh, classical physics. And uh, well, that can be made understood, some understandable, but it's, it's, it's a side issue, not really important to what I'm uh, saying uh, here. By the way, that uh, decoherence can play in, in the situation. So if you have a situation of this, of a state of this kind, which is not a bad product, and you have an environment that couples differently to the two uh, terms, some local uh, interaction, then uh, the, the state that results, if, if these two environment states are orthogonal to each uh, other, the total state that results would be observational or equivalent uh, to, to a mixture well, of these product states. And so you can understand that in, uh, in, in most circumstances, at least as if uh, equivalence uh, plays a role, that you will find results that are close to what we expect on the basis of, of a classical uh, description. So but this is a, a side issue that uh, I think to mention. So, what are my conclusions about the part? So, what's the time? Uh, not so much time. Yeah. Okay. So, the labels we have created are so open and non-fictional governments. And I would say this is of both Symmetrization can be done also in fact. Symmetrization can also be done in both uh, case, cases. The differences do not come from the symmetrization, but from the possibility of an entanglement. But that's what we asked to have uh, seen in, in this, in this uh, single uh, case. But I would say the, the diagnosis in, in cases like that is that the concept of particle is not really applicable to that uh, situation. And anyway, the, uh, the possibilities offered by quantum mechanics 
I think the sum of position and the integral. I, I create the larger, this, 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 there's a fast range of possibilities, far, far, there are far, far more possibilities than in classical uh, physics. But as a, as a part of that enormous uh, class of new possibilities, we still have the old uh, uh, particle decisions. So what we expect in, in, in quantum mechanics is that there are more possibilities than, uh, than less. So we, 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 what we expect in quantum mechanics, even in the case of uh, uh, identical particles, is that there are situations in which the classical description applies, but quantum mechanics allows more than, than, than that. But that seems something that, that, that seems useful. Uh, well, these are things I already uh, said. So, so what's the consequence of this? That in cases in which this batch product description applies, or approximately applies, or can be taken to apply because of uh, decoherence, <coughs> then uh, it's not to be expected that because it's so close to the classical description, you have the classical limit actually here before your uh, eyes, it's not to be expected that uh, completely new, res new results will follow from the quantum formalism than what we used to have in, in classical physics. And in particular, all these the calculations of entropy, for instance, the entropy of mixing, coming back to it again, well, should give you more or less the same results in quantum mechanics as in, in, in the classical uh, physics. Uh, and, and, and the, uh, the, uh, the, the conformity between the results should become better, but the closer we come to the classical uh, limit. And now I have a whole discussion of the entropy of mixing, but let me just say a couple of things uh, about uh, this. So this is about two gases, two uh, containers. Uh, you uh, remove a partition between the two gases, the gases mix, and that results in an increase of, uh, of entropy. And now there's a strange thing that this increase of entropy is independent of the nature of the gases. It's a fixed uh, value. And according to statistical mechanics, this fixed value remains the same, even if the two gases are identical. If, if, if you have the two amounts of exactly the same gas in the two uh, compartments. And that's a bit strange. Because from a thermodynamic uh, point of view, you would say if, if I have uh, well, the same gas on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, and I remove the partition, nothing will happen. So there will be no change in, uh, in entropy. And so that, that, that's what they have said that's on this uh, side. So here I make a quick calculation of this uh, entropy difference. Uh, and now I very often says that quantum mechanics gives you the solution. Because quantum mechanics, if you look at the uh, this state, contains a, a factor, one of the n factorial. And if you put that into the, into the, into the formulas, then it seems at least that the entropy of mixing, according to the statistical and mechanical description, vanishes as, as you would like to have it on the, uh, on the basis of uh, uh, thermodynamics. But if you think about it for a moment, and I'm not going into any uh, technical detail here, but if you think about it for, for a moment, this cannot be right. Because in quantum mechanics, if, if you think along the lines that I just uh, sketched, you can have the same situation as in classical me mechanics, at, at, least, at, at least effectively, in the following uh, sense. You can think of this gas, think of diluted gases, so a couple, couple, couple of molecules in, in, in the two containers, that are characterized, uh, think of an electron gas, diluted uh, electron uh, gas. It, and, and think of the state as a wedge product state. This is reasonable in the case that the states are, do not overlap in, in the diluted gas. You could have, at least for some time, that these states are orthogonal. Mm -hmm. Then if you make thermodynamic experiments, working with semi-permeable membranes and things like that, I will not go into that, then the results you will find, in spite of the simplification, will be exactly the same as what you find in classical because the, 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 the membranes and all the also other dividers will respond to states of this kind as if they are classical particles at a distance uh, from each other. 
And through that argument alone, you can see that the same kind of uh, arguments that you give, can give in, uh, in uh, classical statistical mechanics versus thermodynamics can be repeated in the case of uh, quantum mechanics. And the Gibbs paradox, to the extent that it is a paradox, I, I think it is not actually, it, 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 it's a bit uh, it, it stands at exactly the same way in quantum mechanics as in, uh, in classical mechanics. And it, 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 it's, it's absolutely, absolutely wrong to think that these uh, synthetization postulates mm -hmm. will, uh, will make uh, a difference. So, let me not go into all these uh, things uh, here. So let me go to the conclusions. So, what you see in the literature is that particles are always, not always, but very often thought of as uh, connected to labels. Well, the, I mean the usual labels that you, you find in, in, in the standard formalism that you, that you could also see as labels for the uh, factor Hilbert spaces that make up the total uh, tensor to it. If you do that, then you end up with the conclusion that all quantum particles are in exactly the same state, possibly violating uh, like the principle, the between the zero and etc. Now, now think of this, if, you would, if this would be correct, and if the concept of particle here would be used in the same way as in classical physics, what would, the, would, what would be the conclusion? That if you go to the classical limit, that even classical particles are always in exact, if they're similar or then, are always in exactly the same uh, state. It's obviously it's not uh, true. So that means that uh, the, the way these labels are assigned in quantum mechanics, in this standard uh, treatment, deviates from what you're used to in, uh, in, in ordinary applications of uh, physics. So that's in conflict with uh, how the particle concept is usually understood. So this is my conclusion, I hope. Yes. <laughs> so I would say in classical mechanics, particles or entities are always physically distinguishable be because of this non overlapping of the uh, particle uh, detectors. Quantum mechanics, in spite of the simulation process, can uh, describe some situations uh, as well. But in order to, uh, to do so, you have to represent the particles differently from what you usually do. You have to uh, label them by states, not by uh, these uh, Hilbert space uh, labels. And so quantum mechanics is more general than classical uh, physics. And and a consequence of that is that there are situations in which uh, consistent particle labeling is not possible at all. These are the, the entangled states that I mentioned uh, a moment ago. Uh, and of course, that will have consequences also in, in, the, in the context of information uh, theory. But the, you, you have correlations in, in, in measurement results that cannot be there in, in, uh, in, in classical mechanics. And that makes that, that opens new possibilities for the uh, for the transport of information. But it's not the concept of information itself that is at stake here. It's only that you can use the, the concept, the, the description that quantum mechanics gives of the world, and which is a very different world from the, from the classical world, for informational purposes. So I think it's a mistake to think that the quantum Quantum information is something different from classical uh, information. It's just quantum mechanics that's different from classical mechanics. So, well, that's more or less what I want. Okay. So, but the Reds product makes it, uh, well, 
I think, more convincing in, in the presentation. So the best product has the function of writing, writing these uh, symmetrical or anti-symmetrical uh, state functions as, as, a, as a product. And that makes it clearly visible that you can associate labels to the, to the separate states. But of course, I can do the same thing in the, uh, in, in, in the ordinary format. But now, in, in the best product, I don't have the original labels anymore. So, in, in so the, yeah. may I, uh, just a, a follow up, just so I understand. So, you have what's normally an entangled state, right? And you basically want to say that's one system rather than thinking about it as two. And then the wedge product formalism allows you to keep separate those, well, uh, allows you to separate different entangled states with a kind of label. I mean, is that the function of the no, description or not? No, no. So, so you, you have an entangled state in order to use it So let's, let's, let's say we've got two entangled systems, right? So we've got one, and you want to say, well, you know, this is a non-separable system. We don't want to assign anything like individual labels to those things. Um, but we can assign individual labels to these two separately entangled systems. Is, is that what's going on or not? Yeah, so, so in, certain, in certain cases, that's the case. So in cases in which you can use this best product as a representation of, of the state. So that's not a general case. Because you can, so I would say there's no real genuine entanglement in, in those cases. So that, that's another really puzzling thing. So I mean, what the heck do you mean by that? Um, so, so for instance, there, there are no bell in the Yeah, OK, so let me. Okay. Here's, here's where things get weird for me. So, when I write down a singlet state in regular quantum mechanics, I know that that means certain things ought to happen when I go make measurements. Yes. And uh, then you have this mapping from this particular way of describing things to a new way of describing things. But then you say, oh, there's no entanglement there. And in a sense, I, I think, well, what do you mean? We just assigned a different kind of formal representation to this system. Yeah, so there's no but if it doesn't have exactly the same kinds of operational properties that were associated with the original system, then in what sense does no, it so the, the operational properties are exactly the same. So there is no change. In, but what I am saying, uh -huh. these operational properties are not of the kind you expect in an entanglement. So the, 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 there are no measurement results that indicate an entanglement in, in, in these cases. Then I, I well, OK. I, I just don't, so, I really so, don't get it then. <laughs> so, so, yeah, can I? No, no, no. So the mistake that that's usually made is that uh, people use non-symmetrical operators. It, so they write down the, the, the singlet state, up, yeah. down, minus, yeah. down, up. And, and, and then they're going to, uh, uh, to, to ask for correlations between A, A, yeah. A1 and, and B2. But if, if they are symmetrical particles, or identical particles. The standard quantum information tells you that you can only use symmetrical observables. If you don't use symmetrical observables, you get into contradictions uh, in, in the controllers because you will get out of the set of symmetrical uh, states in the Mokonian, yes, you mentioned uh, nothing. Now, so if you look in the proper way, you will not be able to be a uh, belt, uh, a violation belt. Now, I'm not denying, of course, that there are these aspect experiments and things uh, like that. But I'm saying that what, what you are dealing with in that case is not just the, the singlet state, but a, a, a total state, which is, it also contains a spatial part, which should be properly uh, made symmetrical. I, I, I have that state uh, somewhere here. Ah, but I'm going to do this. Oh, what, what? Oops. Oh, well, anyway. So I, I, I have this, uh, this spatial part. Which, and now, if in that state, that is an entangled state. And that's a state that's actually realized in a spec like uh, experiment. Now, if in that state you, you, you do oil, 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 proper quantum mechanics with symmetrical operators, so you will find the, uh, the violations of, of Bell inequality. And I, but, 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 and I say that that state is entangled, and that means that it's not an anti symmetrization of a product state. So it's entangled in a stronger sense than just having this, this result of symmetrization. 
And, and those states, which in my analysis uh, uh, show that the particle concept is not applicable in, in the usual way. Uh, in, uh, in, well, in those states, you, 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 you can say that things are in that. Does it? I look forward to reading the paper. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, but there are papers. So, so, so this, this proof that uh, dull inequalities are not violated in, in, in space, but that, that's in the literature. So, I, mean, I might be able to try to think of another way to help our area because I was thinking on similar lines. But so the claim is not that given an arbitrary uh, expression of a state on a tensor product space that's entangled, um, that the wedge product form is and tells you that in fact it's not entangled. The claim is rather that when you've got a quantum mechanical state of n uh, systems where you're symmetrizing it, it needn't automatically follow that that state um, is a state which would contain uh, entanglement of a kind which would produce that inequality violation. That's the claim. Yes, yeah, so follow up on, on, on that. So if, if the state can be eaten as a, as a wedge product, then I would say it's not entangled. But you can have superposition of two of these wedge products. It would probably be inadvisable to say, to stipulate that you can't call it entangled, but it might not be a good thing. I mean, well, I'll put myself in the queue. May, may I try to, to, to say what I think you have said and answer for you in my own way, which is, that to a kind of naive view, you think you have two things, two individual things. Say one has a Hilbert space of dimension D, and the other one does as well. If you genuinely had two distinct things, then the total state space would be D squared dimensions, D times D. But by the requirement of symmetrization, you only use the symmetric subspace of the d squared dimensional space. It's a much smaller dimensional space. This now you can think of as a single object. It's not two objects anymore. So these things that initially looked like entangled states are really only associated with a, a single individual thing. All the measurements must live in that space. So consequently, with respect to measurements, again, it looks like a single individual thing, not two things. So that's why you're getting the, the fact that there's no bell inequality violations, because you're no, just making measurements on a single object. No, I don't think so. It's I have two separate objects. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just as confused. I, I have some. <laughs> <That's very good. laughs> I, I would say another thing. Perhaps the name object that refers to individual individual in the philosophical sense, this has to be rejected. We have two entities. This is, I think that this is the idea behind. We have two entities. The entities are kinds of, uh, if you want, bundles of properties. And if you take two bundles and put them together, you have a bundle, only one. Because since they are not individuals just from the beginning, they cannot preserve their individuality when you take them together. So the fact is that what we have in quantum mechanics are properties that combine themselves in different ways. This would be the, the reason behind what you said. OK, I agree with that. And the ontological reason would be this one for me. I mean, you have to think in a certain sense uh, I mean, very, very uh, uh, wide, but not think in, in, a, in a philosophical sense of individual. Because an individual may, may, may I ask you, that does Dennis agree with? Uh, uh, well, I don't want to mix into philosophical discussions about the bill at this moment, in, about the bundle theory, but uh, in, in, yeah, I largely agree with the, the, the uh, Olympia. We but I don't think you the said. I largely agree with Olympia, but so there's an, uh, a non-transitivity here. <laughs> <laughs> That's possible. So, so I, I, I want to explicitly deny that if you go to the batch product state, you're coming from a, a system composed of two things to, to one single thing. Now, the idea of the batch product is exactly to, to make it visible and, and, and clear that you have two discernible entities. They are discernible by, the, by their states occurring in the batch product. So you haven't understood anything. 
I have a Adam wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I, I try to, to to introduce a slightly different perspective. I mean, what the number two case for you, you have two stations. You have you're doing performing experiments here and there. You even can have a Bell experiment using a single photo. Okay, what well, is called a single photo? I mean, just uh, there are experiments on this. So there's something you said at some point that is you are sort of identifying particles with position of the particles and then no, you get in trouble because but you made a statement that I would say exactly the opposite way. You said I cannot tell that these are particles because look, these positions are entangled. I would say, well, I can call them particles, but I cannot say that these entities called particles have as a as a property. A definite position. That's, that's it is my standard perspective. Oh no, 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 I have no problem with that. So, so I, I, I only wanted to say that if you use position as a label, so you, you, you want to go to this idea. So suppose you want, you want to go into the direction of identifying part of the localized things, then it would follow that you cannot associate to these positions the full range of, of particle properties. So you, so you don't yes. have. I but you could, you could, you could start from the other side and. and, and, and at the spin side, and then there is no, then there is no position attached to to to, to the spin. Uh, so I, I'm I'm saying that the particle concept is, in the usual sense, is not applicable to situations of that kind. I have to look at the one photon uh, thing. Oh, that's so, right. so, so, so yeah, that's why there was a huge discussion of whether these one photon experiments were actually well experiments, and uh, there's a beautiful paper as well by Aser, one page paper by Aser Perez, in which you, I mean. Yeah, I think I've thought about in this context. My, so my, my, my suggestion is forget about the rest of the literature, go to that paper, and you convince it, game over. Because okay. there's, there's yeah. also a nice I'll paper by, by Stephen Van Eck with the title Is 0, 1 plus 1, 0, meaning no photon in this mode, one photon in that mode plus. Oh, it's, 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 it's entangled, yeah. and the abstract reads yes. I mean, I will use Isaac Press again. Bell parties are not at all about quantum theory. Bell parties is a, is a game in which you have two parties screaming from time to time. No matter why they're screaming or don't scream, it's, 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 you don't need to define anything. And you can play this game with a single party. That's, that's a fact. I would like to let Federico because he yeah. sees that you're right. <laughs> he wants to say it's something here. Uh, regarding the, this discussion, there is a paper by Christina uh, Junior and Christina Father, I don't remember, maybe this year, I don't know. No, no, he no. would say, can I give a precise characterization of? what is entangled and what is not, at least for fermions. If you want entanglement for fermions, you need a superposition of at least two Slater determinants. So in a mathema mathematical formal way, then you can violate bell inequalities and this will be expected in the lab. So mm -hmm. but if you only have one Slater determinant, it means that you have excited one node here and one, one node there. So in standard non-relativistic quantum mechanics, you don't expect any kind of uh, non-local correlations between them. And that's what actually happens in the lab. Yes. But if you do the superposition between the preparations, you will be able to write yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. this is characterized. And so, so I think that somehow no, answers what, to what, your question. What you do in the experiment is you introduce locally extra modes. So I mean, the, the, what is, is leading here is the term there a single photon bell experiments. They are. It says that at the source you have a single photon. But there are, this, this is, it's not correct. It says that locally to measure one in the case, we can use extra points. Whatever. Well, I don't, it's what I'm saying. Is, this is a lot of depending on what you, but I, I always go back to the, to, to the fact. In, in case of bell equalities, everything is classical. It's a classical game with two parties. Screaming from time to oh, no, time. Certainly. And what is behind this is not that important, but the importance is whether you violate or not a bell quantity, which is perfectly well defined without quantum theory and without the notion of particles and without 
you just need this ace time and two ages. And, and, and A, when, when I saw you, <laughs> somehow you conclude that there are differences between the classical case and the quantum case, and these differences come mainly from entanglement. So they say, because yeah. of you have, but I have one more extra difference, because <laughs> even if, if exchange correlations, I mean, the, the correlations which come just from the symmetrization postulate did not violate by themselves bad inequalities. You don't have a classical number of you don't, If you have classical non interactive particles, you will not well, observe. The, so, so I so wonder if in, in, in the, the cross sections of collisions and so on, you can even have effective clues. Ah, you can. Yeah. Okay. I but propose because, to follow because, with okay. the okay. break. <laughs>